Over the weekend, Indigenous people marched in protest in Rapid City, South Dakota, organized by the Great Sioux Nation's Tribal Chairman's Association. Protesters marched on the Grand Gateway Hotel because the owners of the hotel banned Native people from the property. Joining us is the managing editor of Indians.com, Kevin Aberesk. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Leah. Thank you for having me. So I understand you were there on the ground in Rapid City. Tell us what you observed um, at this protest. Sure. Yeah, this was a pretty uh, incredible event. And obviously the events that led up to this uh, were even more startling. Uh, But uh, the event itself on Saturday uh, essentially involved about a thousand people uh, who took part in this march and uh, met at the hotel where uh, this um, had all started. Um, so how it began was um, there was a rally at Roosevelt Park in Rapid City, South Dakota. About, uh, oh, maybe 800 people or so were there to hear different people speak, including Mark Tilson from, uh, and Nick Tilson from uh, Indian Collective and a number of other tribal leaders, uh, including uh, Harold Frazier from the Standing Rock, I'm sorry, from the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe and uh, tribal leaders from, from the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Crow Creek Sioux Tribe. So. From there, um, the, the people marched up uh, a, a street called La Crosse Street in, in Rapid City. This kind of uh, is a street that cuts through a very heavily populated uh, native part of town in Rapid City. And um, people carried signs. They carried things that, that read like uh, Indians Allowed, Land Back. People wore black T-shirts that read Good Indian and Bad Indian. Those were a reference to a statement made by the Grand Gateway Hotel owner, Connie Yuri, who, of course, when she banned Native Americans from her hotel, said it was because she couldn't tell the good Indians from the bad Indians anymore. So people wore good Indian and bad Indian, so that maybe she would know. You brought this up already, but tell us how we got to the point where Indigenous people are showing up, as you mentioned, in really large numbers to say that this was wrong. How did we get here? Absolutely. Well, this all started on March 19th. It was a Saturday. Um, there was a 19-year-old Lakota man, Quincy Barrow, who shot another young Native man, Myron Poirier Jr., at the Grand Gateway Hotel in Rapid City. A day later, Connie Yuri, the hotel's owner, posted on Facebook that she would be banning all Native Americans from the hotel because she could no longer tell the difference between the good Indians and the bad Indians. Local activists, including the Indian Collective, responded. Uh, they accused her of violating the civil rights of all Native people by banning them from the hotel. They, mar- they organized a march to the federal courthouse in Rapid City, where they filed a federal civil rights class action lawsuit against Yuri and the other owners of the Grand Gateway Hotel. Then, of course, uh, the march and rally was held on Saturday. Um, and the march ended with uh, tribal leaders delivering a uh, notice of eviction uh, to Connie Yuri and the other owners of the hotel. And they actually marched inside the lobby of the Grand Gateway Hotel to deliver that notice of eviction. And they posted a banner over the uh, hotel's uh, highway sign as well uh, to let people know that the, that she was evicted. Um, And, you know, also earlier on Saturday, a number of tribal leaders met at a conference center there in Rapid City to talk about other possible actions, including potentially uh, moving the uh, Lakota Invitational Basketball Tournament from Rapid City to another community and possibly moving the Black Hills Powwow out of Rapid City as well. All actions that they hoped would uh, uh, essentially force the city of Rapid City to understand how important uh, Native people are to that community and what kind of impact they can have economically uh, if they choose to do that. So, Since all of these events unfolded, has anyone from the hotel or uh, the owners of the hotel uh, said anything in response to what's happened? Um, the owners of the hotel have said very little. Nick Yuri, who's Connie Yuri's son, um, did say that uh, he didn't stand by her words. Um, but as far as I know, uh, there has been no official uh, sort of decision to allow Native people back into the hotel. In fact, there have been Native people, including from the Indian Collective, who've tried to uh, rent hotel rooms there and have been denied. So when this rally was happening outside of the hotel, were the doors just closed? Like, was it operating fully inside and there was just a giant protest outside? You know, I actually didn't get to go inside. I was right outside the door with my camera um, getting some photos, but the door wasn't closed. I do know that. I did see uh, one tribal leader from um, the, the Lower Brule Sioux tribe. Uh, he walked in, the chairman of that tribe walked in uh, first, I believe. 
and the other tribal leaders followed suit. But uh, but as far as I know, the doors were open. I don't I don't think anybody had to try to force their way in or anything like that. Uh, there were police standing just a few feet away, probably about a half dozen or so Rapid City police officers standing, you know, less than 50 feet away or so. So um, I don't think they anybody believed they did anything illegal by walking into the hotel. I believe the hotel was open at the time. Well, Kevin, while we have you here, I want to switch gears because I understand that you just won a, a major journalism award. Congratulations to you. Um, tell us about what the award is and um, the special connection that you have to the uh, award who it honors. Sure. I appreciate that. And uh, just a, a minor point of clarification. This wasn't actually an award for my journalism, um, although maybe that was included in, in why I was given the award. But uh, this was the um, Leo Yankton Award for Indigenous Justice. And this was... Uh, given to me last night by the University of Nebraska-Lincoln uh, Department of Ethnic Studies. And uh, the, the award is named for a good friend of mine, uh, Leo Yank Yankton, who passed away last August from throat cancer. Um, and Leo Yankton was, was just really an amazing person. He was a modern Lakota warrior. He gave his whole heart, including, you know, indeed every fiber of his being to his people. He would give away his belongings to those he felt needed more. He needed them more. He once gave away his Toyota Tundra pickup truck, which he prized and loved to his uncle Laverne living on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Really barely a day went by when some, someone would call on Leo to help them or someone they knew who needed clothes, furniture, or a place to live. Leo would drop everything he was doing to help that person and call on everyone he knew, setting up GoFundMe drives and hosting live streams to call on his friends and relatives to step up. He was a Sundancer, a nonprofit director, a community organizer who hauled wood and water to Standing Rock, spoke in distant places like Sweden and England about the plight of indigenous people in America, and helped save our local Indian center. Um, as I mentioned, he passed away uh, last August, August 26, actually, of last year. Uh, but despite that, his work here isn't done. Um, and I'd encourage everyone watching this show to visit and like the Intertribal Spiritual Lodges page on Facebook. That's the nonprofit that Leo founded. And it will be the vehicle that many of us who, who he left behind will be using to carry forth his visions for improving the lives of his people. And uh, we definitely have a lot of work ahead of us in order to do that. So. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for being here and please join us again. Absolutely. Thank you, Leah. Great to thank you for having me.